Hey everybody, it's Triple L coming in to talk about uh, My Hero Academia. Whoops, uh, 298 I think? I think it's 298. Uh, it's, it's 298. Uh, crumbling sound if you were looking at the fan translations or sounds of collapse if you were looking at Viz. Anyway, hey guys, uh, what a chapter. So in this chapter, as you saw, we skipped over what was going on at the prison. I am sad. Uh, but also kind of happy because we moved to the kids and I want to see more of the kids, but this is like the worst way to do it. I'm sad. I think that's ultimately where I'm at. Um, so for this chapter, I got a few general notes and then we go into the page-by-page -page walkthrough and then uh, there's going to be a lot of notes at the end once we get past the page-by-page -page walkthrough because there's a, a few things that we had to talk about because I think this is a chapter where I don't think the author had space to put in everything that should have been in there in terms of the questions of who why are some people not there in the final scenes right um so that's why we're going to be talking about it at the end anyway for this chapter let's just talk about the fact that hey we're not at the prison we skip over the seg the segment at the prison um that's really interesting i think last video i mentioned something uh, the idea that maybe stain would be the character that kind of tells us what happened at the prison and right now you know that might happen uh seeing that uh, all for one was still damaged is good because that implies that shizaki might have gotten away relatively safely uh but i am kind of curious uh some of you might know that i was really hoping that we see Shigaraki try and dust all for one. I thought that would have been a cool thing to have. I, you know, didn't happen here, but it might happen in the future still. I, I want to hold out hope there. Um, but for now, I'm just thinking, yeah, what we have here is a situation where something has happened at the prison. There was some kind of speech going on because chances are all for one being the hammy person he was would give a speech. Uh, we need to know what exactly Stain did. We need to know what Shizaki did. Those two characters not being around is really interesting and we don't really know what structure all for one himself the real man is taking as opposed to the vestige the vestige structure of organization we understand it it's pretty much spinner and dobby and maybe skeptic but we don't really know what the main body is doing so this is going to be an interesting situation going forward and i do hope we do get a mechanism where either overhaul or stain tells us what actually went down at arteris now for this chapter as well this one caused a lot of kerfuffle uh, when it comes to the Bakugo Izuku shippers. It was actually really interesting uh, to see the Twitter reaction, how many people were freaking out about Bakugo running over to Izuku's room. Um, the trope of Bakugo being injured and going to Izuku's room anyway, with people trying to stop him and him getting hurt in the process. That's that. It, it's definitely something that shows up in shipping a lot. I was going to make a separate video for it, but I ran out of time. Anyway, no, I'm, I might do that still. Anyway, point is, um, it's interesting how that got the Bakugo Izuku fans riled up. What's also really interesting is that uh, I, I believe that Horikoshi has done this trope before. It's a pretty popular trope. People were saying that, you know, now their fan fictions have come to life. But it, it's not so much that the fan fictions came to life. It's more like the fan fictions banked on a really common trope when it comes to Shonen Jump or when it comes to just in general anime. Showing an injured character going towards another injured character in the hospital while injuring themselves, that's an easy way to show readers that characters care about each other and it's also really dramatic. And that's the big thing to take away from that. Anyway, let's just get into the page by page walkthrough. Those were the general notes. Page one. All I'm going to say for this page is that I feel like the, the page is really cobbled together. I get what the page is going for, uh, but when you apply, I, I, th I think when you apply critical thought to what seems to be conveyed on the page, that being that in exchange for costs covered, twice had a clone of Redestro made or something along those lines. I don't think it works in my opinion. Like it's just not landing with me. And then on a technical note, I don't think the page is like well constructed. Uh, we start with a flashback, then we jump into a disembodied narrator uh, making a transition between the flashback and the real time, and then we jump into fake Redestro's justification of the situation. Uh, the thing with this page is that when you look at it, you could remove the upper two thirds of the page and nothing fundamental changes because the idea that Redestro would have a clone made, you don't need this idea of the villains having a like or be. The villains being indebted to the paranormal liberation front you don't need that because they were organizations that merged they made shigaraki their figurehead they made shigaraki their leader the idea that redestro would have a clone made that makes sense entirely from just knowing that they had merged together um so that's my thoughts on the page i think it's a little bit clumsy 
Uh, but that's not a big deal in the long run. Anyway, in this page, Redestro told us that he made a copy of himself. And take note, he calls villain fight a holy war. This is important. Remember, the Liberation Front are the most sensational group that we've seen in Hero Academia. It wasn't a holy war. It was a turf war premised on the fact that Redestro didn't like that a group of underdogs were more popular than the legacy that he inherited. Uh, but this is important to remember. Because the Front is sensational and people fall for sensationalism in real life all the time. Page 3, we see the Redestro copy in the end of a fight, so I felt kinda bad, like I get it, Redestro is happy that he's finally got a government contract and you see it in his dialogue, finally his efforts as a businessman are being recognized, but it's a sting op. Um, I felt bad, but then I reminded myself that Redestro was a terrorist and arms dealer, and it kinda went away. Do note though, public safety lady, she did look pretty messed up in this shot, and do note that there were two heroes in the scene given that, well, they weren't in the standard uniform. Page 3, the end of the Redestro clone. Was it because the clone took too much damage or because Twice died? Doesn't really matter. I do want to point out this page is really strange from a narrative perspective. This line is the most important. The author went really far to make sure we saw this. The amount of effort that the author put into this tells me Redestro is still going to be a thing in the story. And with all the prison breaks happening in the background, that's a reasonable assumption I think. Um, now with regards to order without order. You know, I love picking apart what the Liberation Army does. This guy wants order without order. That means he wants anarchy. An anarchy enforced by something. Look, at the end of the day, quirks are dangerous. What this guy wants is unregulated quirks. What this guy wants is a world where everyone gets to walk around where, with a bare minimum a weapon. And some people happen to walk around with nukes. Now, the problem with this world is, if we lived in a world of saints, total freedom, like the way that Redestro was, would be fine. You know, it could, it could work. But the reality is, you live in a world with people like Muscular. No. This is going to ruin society. There's too many insane people running around, and they're going to... What's going to happen is that they're going to use their power against someone. Someone's going to end up getting killed. That person's going to end up having a family. That family's going to get upset. That family's going to want to get revenge. And we just continue a horrible cycle of destruction. This world that Redestro has legitimately is a world that he can only want because he lives in a relatively peaceful society at this point in time. Thankfully, this is the story of how Izuku became the greatest hero ever. So we don't have to actually worry about seeing this world. But I do hope that Redestro one day has a oh god what did i want kind of moment now that said the fact that the author is reminding us of true freedom through liberation i think it's important to remember that redestro is not compatible with all for one if he finds out that all for one just wants to rule society from the background it's possible that redestro being the freedom fanatic that he is will strike against him um, no one's going to be liberated beneath all for one Though all for one can definitely give them the illusion of liberation. So the seeds are already so line makes sense because from Redestro's perspective, that is the case. Um, some people legit do want freedom. But the question is, how do those people interact with all for one's methodology? In the chapter, we already see some friction between the two mentalities. And we'll point that out when we get there. Page 4, nothing I can really add aside from like cool designs. Page 5, cool shot for all for one, messing with the pilot. Now the clincher in this page is the 7 prisons were attacked, but only 6 had people freed. Really interesting detail, that's a plot point. Something strange happened at one of those prisons. Was it a stronger than average hero force maybe, or was there something that went wrong? At the end of the day, that's a distinction, we should keep it in mind. Page 6, all for one and Shigaraki's body is back home. Really interesting that everyone's outside when there's a perfectly usable house behind them. Hey, I'm not going to question it. And Dobby is back to white hair, so there's probably a mistake going on in the previous chapters. Anyway, interesting that all for one is using the prisoners as a distraction. Definitely a good idea, but it does speak to his vulnerability. I'm actually curious with the vestige requiring Shigaraki's people to guard him and how exactly that relates to All For One Prime and how he intends to move. It's, um, he's already getting into really indirect chess movements, and that's, it gets me curious. Anyway, this page shows the conflict I spoke of earlier. Spinner's not into this, and also it's cool to see that he mentioned the gaming and that being a bonding tool for Shigaraki. But yeah, All For One says he respects Shigaraki's will. So here's the thing. Does he respect Shigaraki's will? Or what All For One says Shigaraki's will is. Remember, All For One is the guy that in chapter 297, when Shigaraki says he wants his body back, the man talks like a devil lawyer and says, hey, me doing stuff is part of the deal. In exchange of power, this is what you kind of signed off for. So yeah, you know, it's me blowing everything up, but it's really all you, because you made that choice, my boy. Um, that's All For One. 
Anyway, point is, given what we know of All for One, there is no actual reason to believe that Master Manipulator that manipulated hundreds of people into following him, All for One, when he says he respects Shigaraki's will, there's no reason to take that seriously. All for One, I think it's kind of guy that would kill Spinner and then tell Shigaraki, hey Shigaraki, this is what you get for signing up for power. We had to kill him. He was he was making you too weak. We, we had to make you stronger. I am looking out for your best interest. That is totally an All for One move. No, Shigaraki's in trouble, man. Page 8. Bakugo's alive. So apparently there were some people that thought that Bakugo would die. And I'm just thinking it was a thin gut wound. I remember when we had that moment when he had the injury. Bro, I was looking at it like, yeah, he's probably going to be fine, guys. Um, people have had their lungs removed in Hero Academia and lived. So interesting. It's interesting to see how bloodthirsty some of the fan base is. Page 9. Some people arrive in Bakugo's room. And it's not the bunch you would expect. It's actually a lot of the background characters. So on this page, we get setting info two days later. And good to know that the heroes are being treated well. I will say that... This feels like the government knows that they can't throw the heroes under the bus really because they are taking care of them really well. The panel I love the most on this page though is this one. He looked he, like Bakugo looked so calm. Uh, the one I'm surprised that he didn't ask about though was Best Genist. I, that might have just been an oversight from the author. Um, also worth pointing out that Hawks is probably in this hospital as well. Page 10, we have the students looking down and you can know that they've been crying because the, their eyes are drawn a little bit darker. They're most likely upset about everything that's going on. And they're looking down definitely because of the fact that Izuku isn't awake and Endeavor is going into surgery. Um, Nejire is probably fine, all things considered. Uh, Gran Torino is alive. Personally, I'm happy. I want Gran Torino to be there all the way throughout. I think it would be cool if Gran Torino is there when All Might dies. Now, the author chose to have Torino mention Nana, and I think that's really important. So... He's setting up some kind of emotional follow through for later. I hope we get to see it. It should be noted that even though he's alive, he probably feels like dying. Uh, page 11, we got to see Aizawa's damage and that kind of got me. I really hope he gets the Eddie treatment, but if he doesn't, prosthetics are really good in Hero Academia. And I'm not really concerned because he'll just join Electroplasm in terms of UA staff missing feet. Note though, the doctor brought up Rock Lock. This is actually really important. It's important that readers be made clearly aware that even the small guys were worthwhile, especially in an arc like this where many little efforts came together to negate the worst possible outcome. Giving Rocklock the accolade here, along with Manual, I think was a good move from the author and I really appreciated it. Uh, page 12 is the interesting page. Momo, Mina, and Kirishima all together and they all have the marks that indicate that they might have been crying for a, a good while. They, Those three were also the three shown with Midnight, they're only missing Sugar Man. I am legitimately curious as to why the author had Kirishima in Shoto's room. It's weird on first glance, but like really there's a lot of mundane solutions to that. For instance, you can just say it's just where he happened to be. But if we were to go with a reason beyond coincidence, well, Momo being in Shoto's room makes sense. Of the three boys, Momo's friendship with Shoto is the most developed. If she found out that he was awake, she would have gone to him. Um, Mina may have followed Momo though because of the recent trauma that they shared and Kirishima may have followed her in turn because of the shared trauma and and Kirishima does have a substantial friendship with Mina. Now worth pointing out given that Mineta's group had only just reached Bakugo it indicates that the kids only recently arrived at the hospital which will be important for later when we talk about a few more things and also Shoji is in Shoto's room I think just to like make it not awkward I think he had to put someone in there. Page 13 Momo gives false hope after saying they know what happened with Dobby and then when we have the Todoroki family arriving as we find out Endeavor's going into surgery. Page 14 has Shoto recalling Star Servant. Personally I would not take the ravings of a possible homeless person into consideration but you know like let Shoto do what he has to do he's having a big traumatic moment. I did like this panel the most though I liked how it the author put it together. Page 15 is Shoto fully saying aloud why Dobby is no good. Uh, what I didn't expect was Shoto seeing Dobby as a version of himself. Uh, strong rhetoric. You can build a great fight from that since now it wouldn't just be a fight against blood but it would be a fight against your worst potential. So now Shoto can be at a point where he tells Dobby right as he fights him something like I could have been you but my friend saved me or something like that. It's, it's, a, it's a ripe line for Shonen Jump. Uh, page 16 super important page. This is Shoto giving Endeavor a mercy. Note also, Shoto referred to him as dad, not Endeavor. This is a page of kindness and also desperation from Shoto to Endeavor. Now, problem is we don't want Shoto to get tunnel vision and destroy himself the way Dobby has. And that's definitely one of the big fears when you see his face on this particular page. But thankfully, we have page 17. Shoto's support system is here. And when the spoilers came out, I didn't think it was Rei in the silhouette, but it does look like it could be her. Now, mind you, 
I would be very scared letting Rey out of the psych ward to see her son in such an emotional situation. That seems very sketchy with me. Just the other day, doctors were running to her room to turn off the TV. I don't think letting her out, if it is her, during such an emotional situation is a good move for her. It's a good move for Shoto, but I am concerned. I am also wondering if it is her, if she's going to go see Endeavor and have a little powwow with him. Not sure. I This is uh, something I'm actually very curious about for next week. I, I do want to see how it's going to be handled. Finally, we're at page 18 and 19 with Bakugo going for Izuku. Now, people were confused about Bakugo's line here, uh, but this kind of line is actually really common for anime characters like Bakugo. Uh, the, se the usual setup for it is like when one character stays behind to hold off an enemy, the other friendly character or the rival will say something like, if you die, I'll kill you. Um, so it's a super common line, especially for battles. Um, so I, I don't find, you know, I don't find him saying... I don't find it all that weird. This is just how this is just how Bakugo expresses concern. This is just how his type of character archetype expresses concern. Anyway, on the final page we have Izuku not waking up. I feel like we're going in for an all for one dream sequence, but you know, there could be many things going on. At which point we start talking about just general observations. So what could be happening to Izuku right now? This feels like it's an all for one related Oh, sorry. This is a one-for-all related problem. Sorry if I said all-for-one. Feels like it's a one-for-all related problem. He might be having um, a moment. Like, one-for-all might be kicking right now. He's trying to parse it in his head. Um, it's also possible that if Danger Sense is active... If Danger Sense really is allowing Izuku to see other people suffering the way that Horikoshi indicated it during that one panel... Izuku in a in a hospital full of people that might be close to dying might be a legitimate bad thing for him. He might be legitimately getting some kind of danger overload right now. Um, and given that what we know about the fifth user right now, the fifth user might be the one coming to Izuku in like the next chapter telling him like, hey, you got to get this under control. Danger Sense will overwhelm your senses if you're not careful. We do know that Danger Sense already hurts Izuku. It might just be keeping him in a coma just from like the overabundance of tragedy in the hospital, which will be kind of rough it might just you know that's like one of the ideas it might just be a general one for all power sequence where izuku has to like sort out his mentality um right now bakugo is going in there i wouldn't be surprised if bakugo yelling is one of the things that uh, wakes up izuku in general um now to address other things in the chapter not all the kids are present at the hospital we're missing quite a few kaminari i know people are saying that he's a traitor like oh my god uh kaminari jiro but most interestingly Ida, Ochako, Suyu, and Koda are not there. Especially Koda. That's the weird one. In a chapter where you have so many randoms, why do you not have Anima there? Anyway, before we get to that part, I do want to say just like the most mundane thing. It's possible that they might be in other parts of the hospital or they might be engaging in shift work. There's a lot of chaos going on right now. The kids might be busy. Um, I will say the kids being in uniform is quite strange, however. Um, but it might be... Uh, UA wanting to look strong kind of thing because the kids would have to get in there they'd, they'd have to come in from outside the media would have seen them um, it's an interesting choice it's interesting that they're still in their un that they all came in in their uniforms anyway when it comes to Ida, Ochako, Suyu and Koda I do want to see these characters because these characters know what happened immediately after Izuku went unconscious Maybe there's some cool little things that happen in between those time periods. I would like to see more information. Um, but them being away, it's interesting that you that you moved away those characters when they're when the people that the, when the people you can compare them to the most, that being Kirishima, Mina, and Momo, because they were the ones who were active on the other side. It's interesting that you have them not there while you have their counterparts there. It's also worth pointing out that Tokoyami probably isn't there, but Hawks is probably in the hospital. Tokoyami might be hanging out with Hawks. We can add in other things. Ida might be with Manuel. Ochako and Suyu might be checking on Ryukyu. Like, there's a lot of there's a lot of easy ways to justify these characters being missing. But it's just interesting that it's this set of characters that are gone. Anyway, um, other point, the lack of parents. Some are taking this as proof, for instance, that Inko is dead. Uh, but that's jumping the gun. I mean, I'm not saying it's impossible, but I, I, I do think it's exceedingly unlikely. Like, I think it's 99% sure that Inko is still alive. Um, I do want you to know, on page 12, see how there's that barricade? And also note that it's today that Shoto's family came to visit. So think about what that means. Shoto's family wasn't in there before 
the chapter starts, right? Does that mean they're terrible people? No, no, no. The simplest answer here may just be that there are protocols in place to ensure that only the right people can visit at the right times and be let in safely. People have lives, and from what we're seeing here, they are being careful with who they let in. Now, it is important to note, however, that since All Might is visiting Izuku, the parents do legitimately, sh or they should have visitation rights. So I think it's just an issue of the parents haven't arrived, and that maybe we'll see them arrive later in the same way that Shoto's family arrived in the middle of the chapter. Finally, the last thing that's worth talking about is, is there going to be another attack? Is there going to be a hospital attack? Well, if I was all for one, man, I'd... I'd shoot an energy missile into the building. I would do it, 100%. I'd just shoot. Like if I got a quirk that can just fire missiles, I would just go at it. I, I would I would go 100%. I think that would be a, a big, loud event. You have the media there, you're covering it. But maybe all for one, we don't know what he's up to. Maybe he's like taking a break. He's like taking a chill pill. Then again, he said he'll never stop taking his turn. So he should be doing something, right? That would be the smart thing to do. Um, but I do want to point out, I don't... There has been one time in Hero Academia where we have had, well, a lot of reporters clamoring outside of a building. Mind you, they were clamoring outside of a gate, but I think it would be, we got to kind of be looking out for it. The possibility that um, all for one, in the same way that Shigaraki once went up to UA and brought down the wall, all for one comes up through the crowd of reporters and blasts a hole in the hospital. Um, he could do it. It'd be a callback to one of those early chapters. Uh, the thing is, we don't know how many heroes are actually at the hospital right now in terms of guarding it. It might be Ida Ochako and the rest of them guarding it, uh, but it kind of dangerous. Legitimately, it would be kind of dangerous. But legitimately, if All for One went for that move, like he has the power, he could do whatever he wants. If All for One just comes in and drops in up like 20 villains with a warp gate, can anyone really stop them? It's going to be just mayhem in this whole place. Anyway, for next week, I'm hoping that we see what's going on with Izuku. We see what's going on with Shoto. I hope that we don't get any villain attack. I want to take a break, man, right? Like I want to, I just, I want to understand what's going on. I want to understand the full weight of the fallout. I want the closure, you know, that that's what I'm kind of hoping for next week. Guys, let me know what you're hoping for down below, and I'm going to call it there. Thanks for watching, and until next time, I hope you have an absolutely great day.